Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. It's an exciting day. No, actually, it's an incredible day. We are going to talk about every single product that's made by Microware. Microware is a smartwatch company that actually makes these things and they're going full guns to get their products out there, including showing up this week in China at a very special global sources mobile electronics show in Hong Kong, uh, 18th through 21st of October. If you're in the neighborhood, drop in, check it out, where they will be exhibiting all four of these watches, the Microware H1, H2, X2, and L1, and guess what? They're all here. Yeah, every single one of them. <laughs> oh, we're going to take a look at them and pump out some quick reviews because uh, we definitely want you guys to see these. Now, the H1, we already did a review on that. Check the show notes and probably at the end in the corners, I'll have a, a link to this one so you can take a look at the H1 review. But we have not seen the H2 or the L1, or the new band, the X2. So, where do you want to start? Let's begin with this one. Well, this is the L1, folks, and inside this box looks like an Android watch. It's got all the build quality and characteristics that you'd find on a typical Android watch, but this is really a, a basic tethering watch. So, let's take a look at it. It's solid, good TPU band. Look at that, it's got a little camera button and that's the charging port. So you can open it up and connect your USB charging dock uh, or connector directly here. Wow, you got a little button hole thing that you can press to eject a SIM card uh, slot. So you can put a SIM card where you can do all of your communication directly from the watch. Nice, huh? Probably microphone right there. Heart rate monitor on the bottom and well sealed. Very well made watch. Let's take a look at what else we have in here. Inside of a box, we have lots of goodies. Okay, we've got the uh, USB connector. Now I'm thinking, let me verify this. When I pull this out, there's the USB end, but look at this. Now check yours out. I don't think yours is that long. Mm -mm. No. This is a special one, so keep this with this watch because you're going to need that long depth to be able to get in here. Now I've opened it already, and I didn't close it tightly because it's kind of a pain to get in here. You have to lift it from the side of the button and then you take this and you stick it way down in there. Okay, a regular one won't go far enough and you won't get the connection and the charge. So you need this extra long USB connector wire to make this watch work. Keep these together. Also in the box is the little tool that you're going to be using to eject the tray. Right? He says... Well, <laughs> always on camera, right? Uh, uh. Is it that way? There. You just got to give it a good deep push. And push it again, I guess. Ah, you remove it. And this is where you put your SIM card. Nice, huh? No, I know. It's awkward, but it works, and it's certainly going to help in keeping water intrusion out from one of those little plastic covers. Sweet-looking watch. What are we looking at? We're looking at the L1. It's from Microware, and uh, once again, this is not an Android watch. This is a tethering type of a watch. Gold, silver, black, and inside, it comes with... Uh, the uh, standard 2503 chip with 
32 gigabytes of RAM, and look at 128 megabytes of ROM. Now, I know that's not screaming eye in the gigabytes realm, but it's a little more than uh, you typically get in a basic type of a tethering uh, watch. Uh, so you got a little bit of extra space there. But look at this. Look at this. You can actually also put in an external micro SD card or TF card up to 64 gigabytes. How do you do that? Well, that little slot you just saw that I popped out, I bet you it's dual sided. One side you can put a SIM card in, the other side you can put the micro SD card in and just have all the fun in the world. Here's all the frequencies and everything that go with the networking for when you put in your SIM card. Uh, the screen is a 240 by 240 LCD, 1.3 inch, a little bit smaller size than the ones we're typically seeing on the Android world. So it'll work for a smaller wrist person. It's got the tiny little 0.3 megapixel camera. Nothing to write home about. You're not going to be taking screaming uh, videos with this, I'm sure, but you can get some, some pictures. And the SIM card, the pictures are JPEG format, music, and in all the different languages that are supported. And additional features. Notice that it's a 2G, not 3G. Uh, so if the 2G network has been disconnected uh, or not supported in your area, you might have some issues using a SIM card with this particular watch. Okay, let's take it, charge it up. Always charge your watch up before you begin, okay? It's always good to do that and get a good charge on it to help season your battery. Once it's charged, we will turn it on and run it through its paces. Oh my goodness, I forgot. We have a manual on the L1. <laughs> Sorry, let's take a look at the uh, Born for Sport L1 watch. This is an English manual. Open the USB port from there. We uh, did that. You saw that. Yes, and uh, it's right next to the microphone. That's how you get in there, how to use it. This is one of those rare manuals that's got nice big lettering, so it makes it easy to read. Stuff about the heart rate testing. Blood pressure, okay. Does blood pressure, air pressure, notifications with the tethered app, of course. It's a multi-sport watch. I get so many of these in right now that um, it's kind of challenging to keep them all straight, which do what. There's the QR code you're going to scan to download the Fundu app. Uh, again, check that one out uh, and make sure you also, if you want to, check out the uh, MediaTek smart device app as well as the YY Wear, W-I-I Wear app, because those three tend to work with all these different kind of uh, devices, and some work better than others. Just remember, if you're going to try a different app, uninstall the other one first. Like if you try Fundware, and then you want to try MediaTek Smart Device, to uninstall, don't just disconnect it, but uninstall the Fundware, because they conflict with each other. And you'll have all sorts of trouble connecting with your Bluetooth. Just a little word of advice. All right, now let's charge it up. Well, Microware is definitely surprising me with their line of watches. This one included. Let's take off the little screen protector here and hit the power button to turn it on. Give you a chance to see it and hear it. The, uh, there you go. The L1 what you're looking at is what you call a dual mode watch. That means you can put a SIM card in here if you want to, and you can also tether it to your phone. If you're confused about the terminology, check on our channel here for a, uh, an update we did at the beginning of 2017, a beginner's guide to smart watches. You'll learn about tethering watches and dual mode watches. Since this is a dual mode watch, it has the capability of making and receiving phone calls tethered to your phone. Or, like I said, you put a SIM card in here and you can walk away with your uh, watch and leave your phone behind and make and receive phone calls with the phone number that comes with that SIM card. 
The UI, the user interface on this one is really different. So those of you who yawn every time I go through the same old thing, get ready to be twisted like a pretzel because this does not behave the way we've seen before. You're looking at the watch. If I scroll to the left, I get uh, Bluetooth notifications. This is where the area is if you're connected to your phone that you'd get all of your push from your phone to your watch. And you could go through connecting it with the uh, tethered app that way. If instead I scroll down, I get into um, today's pace. This is a part of the sports thing. And there's two dots here. So I have the step count today. And on this side, I have the weekly summary against the graph of 2,500, 5,000 steps, probably based on what is set for the baseline number of step goal uh, per day for this particular setup. That's your steps. Here's your sleep time. Okay, so it has the built-in sleep monitoring. That's the total time, deep and light sleep that you slept last night and for the past week. Really nice. Haven't seen that on a watch before. Do it again and you get the uh, heart rate, which you're going to come back to. You press this sideways and nothing happens, but it'll, collect, uh, it'll uh, calculate your pulse rate, your heart rate. And you do it again and it'll do your blood oxygen measurement. Do it one more time and now we're up to a barometer which is giving us our barometric pressure and our altitude in, um, in meters. And do it again, and we come into a timer, which is really big digit, and down to the hundredths of a second calculation. You can pause it, play it. You can make a lap time out of it. It counts how many laps you've, you've made. And I presume you can stop it somehow. <laughs> Reset. There we go. And that's the timer. Nothing on either side of that either. Now, what fun we get into the compass. So all of these kind of watches that have a compass built into them, you have to do a sort of a figure eight thing until it settles down and it'll give you the reading. Now, I happen to know that I'm due south right now, pointing that way. And notice that it's got the uh, a big circle around north. If I turn the watch, well, north should go back over here. If I turn it again, oh, well, I'm either getting magnetic interference or something's wrong with the compass because it's not smoothly going. This is approximately correct right there. Where was I? Compass, there we go. But it's not moving smoothly, so maybe outdoors you'll have better results. I'm not, as far as I can tell, close enough to anything to interfere with it. And it could still be a calibration issue, so might need to work with the calibration on it to get it to settle down. But nonetheless, it has a compass built into it. You saw we got to that by going either this way, all the way down, and then there, and back to the watch face, or up. So it's a looping thing. And the last page is this one, where you have control of your basic functions like volume or a sound. There's sound is on. There you're in vibration mode only. Um, sound and vibration, I guess. That's probably sound. That's probably silent. I don't know. We have to try them out and see. Here is uh, the QR code that you scan. You can do that right now from your... Um, computer, if, uh, from <laughs> sorry, from your YouTube page if you want to. You can scan this and uh, download the tethering app. I'm just concerned that it's going to be clear enough for you. There we go. That looks pretty, pretty average in brightness, but I can actually control that brightness from here. This is pretty cool. Look at this. It's like a pie chart, but it's controlling the overall brightness. There's full brightness. There's dim. Now, of course, the camera is trying to automatically adjust so you're not seeing the full range of brightness, but it's pretty good. There, if I go there and now I bring up the QR code, it should be nice and crisp and clear on the screen. Okay, and then I got a toggle for turning on and off Bluetooth. 
You've got your date down here. This has not been calibrated in terms of date and time, which it would automatically update as soon as I would sync it to a phone, but I need to set up the, uh, the app to do that. There's your battery, and uh, this would be your symbol for uh, your strength for your SIM card, and this would be, I believe, your Bluetooth uh, connectivity. This is turning it on and off, and that shows your actual connection. And then we're back to the stop to the watch itself. Okay, so that circles this way. And in some of these, you have an extra page to the side that's related to your health information. Let's do that heart rate thing. Oh, look, I've got a little cover protector on here. I'm going to take that off too. Now I'm going to put a finger over here, and we're going to click to start testing. And this never seen before you and i are doing this for the very first time but that's definitely a totally different display of how it's going to report back the uh, heart rate it's pulsing it's already taking longer than we've seen on some of them but who knows maybe it's integrating several readings in the background before it actually displays which is what i like so it seems to be more accurate if it does that it's continuing to take the pulse, and you see it says click to end. It's specifying that it's normal right now, but it's bouncing all over from 78 to 85, and I'm holding pretty still. All right, let's try click to end, and entry history. Press that, and it goes over here. And now it's showing the date and time, and it's showing... 78 and 87 with 81. My guess is that's your high, that's your low, and that's your average. Similar to what we saw in one of their other watches, I'm going to do another test on it. Actually, you know what? This one, I'm going to, uh, first of all, uh, let, it, let it read air, okay? Is it actually trying to get a blood pressure? Yeah, it is. That's a red flag for me. That's a thumbs down on these watches. It should come back and say, it's an error. I don't, I don't sense your pulse. But if it's coming back, there, it's finally dropping out. If it's coming back and giving you numbers, it makes you wonder, well, where is it getting those numbers, especially if they look reasonable? Where are they coming from when it's just reading air? I'm going to put it on so you get a chance to see what it looks like. Now, let's see what we come up with for values. Remember before it was 78 to 87, somewhere in there. Here it's reading me at 60. And of course it says normal throughout that entire range. So uh, I'm not sure when it triggers it to be different than normal. It is changing slightly. Mm, now it's dropped out completely. Okay, I'm going to say click end and show you the history. And there's the other uh, reading. These are kind of backwards. Usually low is on the left and high is on the right, average in the middle. But there's readings from the watch. And toward the end, I'll strap it on and we'll do this again. But that's part of what you get here. And then you can slide. Nope, can't slide either way. You turn it on and off for, for testing. It says, please set the watch close to the wrist. I wasn't getting the, uh, the full reading there. Click to end. Okay, I want to go further. Let's back that up all the way out. Come back down again. There's the heart rate, and this should be the blood oxygen. So we're going to do the finger technique and press it. And now it's taking a similar type of reading using the same kind of a uh, interface with the flashing lights going around. That could be a bit annoying if you're trying to take your data in private, I imagine, but pretty pizzazzy if you're showing off to your friends. The little pulsing blood drop. Good thing this is happening near Halloween. It kind of fits in for that. Uh, presumably, this is measuring blood oxygen, which should definitely... Oh, wow. No, it's measuring blood pressure. <laughs> okay. I was going to say blood oxygen should be up in the high 90s. But this is your systolic diastolic blood pressure, 133 over 83. It's not changing, so it's doing all of this and coming up with a measurement. And then we can enter the history, date, time, and reading. Huh. All right. Let's, let's really get serious. Let's strap it on and let's actually do this thing. 
Kind of a stiff band, but pretty good. There, not too tight, not too loose, up at about the right place. Now, again, since we're doing blood pressure and not blood oxygen, it's generally good to have this at your heart level and hold really still so that you get an accurate blood pressure measurement. Uh, I'm holding it down lower than my heart right now, so potential is it'll be higher than it should be if there's more blood in my arm pulsing and pressure-wise than there would be if I had it over my head. Nonetheless, this is using the PPG technique. If you're really into blood pressure, then check my video that we've done recently on ECG PPG uh, devices. Uh, this is the PPG approach, and that's the blood pressure it's getting now. Um, reasonable, considering I've had caffeine today and a meal and all of that stuff. Uh, it's a little hypertensive, but not exceptionally high. I wouldn't rule that out as being invalid. So check it, though, uh, for your own health. Make sure that you measure what your uh, watch is giving you versus what your doctor says, you know, or you if you're using a cuff or something to take your blood pressure to make sure that it matches up. Okay, and we're back around the full circle again. So those are the options that you get when you scroll this way. You went that way and you got your notifications, especially if you're connected to your phone. That's where you're going to get the push notifications. And going this way takes us into health. You can start a walking, cycling, running session. Those are the three types of uh, exercise it tracks. You can look at your history and you can set up your sports parameters. Now, this is where it gets fun. You have metric or imperial choices and you notice it changes here. You can turn on alarm per mile uh, run, I guess. Unfortunately, you can't read the rest of where the dot, dot, dot is, and it doesn't scroll. But it's open, meaning it's on, and probably gives you an alarm per mile, or if you have that metric, per kilometer. So that's a distance alarm. Here's a pace reminder. Here's a cost time reminder. I think that means it'll alarm you when you've gone a certain time, every five minutes or something. Here's a goal mileage alarm. And here's a daily sport something or other alarm. Every day alert. So that might be just a timer to tell you you're supposed to exercise. Hopefully some more of the details on this are in the manual or online because it's fairly limited. Experimentation will get you there. Here's where you set up your baseline parameters so it can calculate the data. Your gender and age, height and weight. And that's pretty much it. And it is doing it in um, inches and pounds if you're in English, which is great. And that's all in the setup down here, the sports setting. History shows you your total mileage, total time, and total consume of calories. And that's pretty much it there. And then you've got all of the individual things that you're going to do exercise-wise. I'm going to pick one just for fun, and then we're going to uh, show you kind of how that works. And then we're going to discover this little half moon over here, which if it were that way, would be an Android Wear watch, right? No, they've got a flat tire goes straight across. It's on the side, and it's going to take us into all sorts of other stuff. But wait, let's check this out. You want to do cycling? No, we don't want to do cycling. Cycling doesn't invoke... Um, the GPS and this device has a built-in GPS. Let's do a run. Open the GPS service. Yes. So it's now turning on GPS, which should go out and acquire your location. And it's beginning the run. Now, of course, it takes it a while to acquire. And if you're indoors, it's going to be slow to impossible. You're meant to do this outside. But it's a really nice interface. You have all sorts of different smaller display information, pace and speed. Luckily, they uh, they tell you about it. It says to swipe right to pause. That's left. That's right. So I swipe right. And oh, look, it's going to show you your track as you're moving. And swipe that to the right again. And you can finish it or you can continue it. So this is pausing everything. This is resuming it. Back here's the display. 
and nothing more to the right. There, you see it flashing, trying to get the GPS. It hasn't acquired it yet. When that goes solid, then you've, uh, you're locked in. There's your battery level. So some good, meaningful information for doing a run. Let's bail out of this and do a walk with GPS. It's not making any sound or vibration, so you have to be looking at the screen. And pretty much the same data is showing up, only it's a walk as opposed to uh, a run. There's your time of day at the very top. And what have we got? Nothing there. The track and finish again. And finally, cycling. Notice it didn't ask for GPS because it's not going to give you that. I presume, uh, although it's flashing, so that could still be residual from the other two. Anyway, it also shows you an altitude change now. Your mileage, your consumed calories, your average speed, and your average pace in cycling. And again, you can see the track and you can finish it. So that's everything about fitness and health. Way better than a lot of them, not quite as good as some of them. Compare this with the um, Amaze Fit Pace, and you'll see the similar type of things with similar type of data, but more details and more sports and a lot more money than what you're paying for this one. So let's go over here. Finish this whole thing off. You've got dialer, um, Bluetooth call uh, or Bluetooth connectivity to your phone, uh, phone book, uh, call logs, all that stuff. I'm going to, mm, gosh, go into phone book to show you something. When you have a dual mode watch, you're going to see in the various areas things like this, local or Bluetooth. Local meaning if you have a SIM card in here, um, it's going to pull your phone book contacts off of that. Bluetooth would mean if you're tethered to your watch, we're not, uh, but if we were, you'd be able to see all of the contacts from your phone, right? So when you're dialing out with the SIM card, local tab would be uh, highlighted and you put in your phone number and it would work as a phone by itself. But if you wanted to use the SIM card and the phone number in your phone, you simply switch over to Bluetooth to make that happen. That's characteristic of dual mode. It's both tethering and standalone. Okay, call logs, of course, self-explanatory, messaging, your inbox, local, okay? So all of this stuff is here to support your basic calling and messaging stuff. An audio player is built in. It doesn't have any music in it right now. If it did, you just hit play and that would start playing. Remote notifier, tethered to your phone, will notify you if you've uh, lost your, your uh, phone where it is. And then we get into the camera, an image viewer and video player and video recorder and sound recorder, all that stuff. So all that stuff had to do with communications. Now we're getting into the fun stuff of the little built-in camera. Now take notice of this. The position of the camera is not straight ahead looking forward, nor is it straight out to the side. It's angled. It's angled over here so that I can grab my X2 box which we're going to be doing in a little bit um, in another review. And I can come in here and I can take a picture. Memory card removed. Use phone. Wow. Check that out. We don't have a memory card, a TF or SD card in here. So it can't store there. So it's asking, okay, since you can't store it locally, do you want to store it to the phone? And I'd say yes. And done. Wow. There's a tiny little bit of memory inside the watch, and apparently it has stored it there. And by phone, it meant to this device, it sounds like, because I don't have a phone tethered to this yet. So I can go into Options, and I can switch to Video Recorder, set up the set camera settings, the imaging settings, the shutter sound if you want any, uh, the EV control, all those kind of things. Image settings, maximum 240 by 240. Look at that. Oh, no, look, I can go up to 640 by 480. Okay, that's still not all that big, but it's better. Image quality, normal. Select. Good, normal, low. I guess good is the best. 640 by 480. And now switch back to camera. 
There, let's try taking another picture. I don't know if it'll work. Whoa, did you hear that? Okay, it triggered a sound. It froze the image so that I can see it. Hmm, now what do I do? <laughs> Camera, image viewer, let's go into there. Well, I have one image and there it is. I do not have pinch and zoom. I do not have double tap to make it bigger. I just basically have the image and it looks like it didn't take the second one. Okay. Then you can also go into a video recorder. And now we would, there's my sofa. I'm going to record a little video on the phone. This is my sofa and I'm also talking. Let's see how this works. I stop it. Oh, I went into pause so you can actually pause it or stop it, saving it, and now play it. <laughs> well, I got it backwards. It was recording while it said pause and not the other way around. Ah, uh, well, I'm rushing this review. But you get, a, you get the drift of it. It actually worked. And then there's options that takes you back in here where you can work with your camcorder settings. And so forth. You even have a night mode capability. So, wow, for a little dual mode tethering kind of a watch with all the sports features in it, plus a camera... With all these capabilities, and very sophisticated. Here's our storage, memory card, and smartwatch is selected. And again, you're going to run out of memory really quick with this because there's not much onboard memory. But remember, you can put the SD card, micro SD or TF card it's called, in here. Independent of the SIM card, it's a dual-sided thing. You put that in there and then you can get tons and tons of storage space on this little watch. Okay, that is all part of this on the side. Because you just touch it, all the dialing stuff, all the camera stuff. Then you got an alarm, a calendar, a calculator, a world clock, remote capture, sedentary reminders, your overall file manager, find your device, and then settings. So in the file manager, in the smartwatch, you have music, pick photos and videos. Go in there and there's where my photo was. Go in there and there's where my video clip is. It's not telling us how much storage, but that's a way you can get to that, to that information. Your overall settings, here's where you can set your home city. Oh my goodness, look at that. You can pick out your own city from a whole big list of them. Um, you can set the clock by synchronizing it or turn that off if you don't plan on syncing it and just set your date and time directly in 12 or 24 hour mode if you like a.m. p.m. You have your sound levels that you can set, ring only, your ringtone types. I skipped one. That's your basic telephone. Kind of high pitched. Now that's loud, loud enough I could hear it. I'd probably choose something like that. Whoops, sorry. And that's good and loud too. I'll stick with ring four. Notification tone, you have a few selections there. And that's good and loud. Why? Wow, they sound the same. No, nope, that's a little different. And just a basic beat. And just going to leave the basic beat. Okay. That's all related to sound and your overall volumes. Wow, they're on four of six. So that wasn't even up all the way. There's up all the way. Good loud device. You hear that? Yeah, me too. I can hear that across the room. Very pleased with the uh, sound in this. The display screen timeout. Yay! There's where we can set it from as low as five seconds all the way up to a minute. 
I'll do a minute for the rest of this video, and our brightness levels, which you saw in that other screen, are right here. And you can get this watch real. Look, it's totally washed out. You can't even see the OK there. This would work outside for uh, visibility. Nice. In fact, I almost, yeah, I need to set it at one to be um, soft enough for it to work for the video. International should be all the different languages this thing supports, starting with English, French, Spanish, and so forth. Okay, not a lot. Not Chinese, that's interesting. So it must be a special international version. Motion, wake up gesture is off, but I can turn that on and then theoretically when it's off and I twist it, <clears throat> uh -huh. when I twist it and I shake it, well, there. Took it a while to just recognize it, I guess. That was in settings, right? In motion. Then you can reset it. You got flight mode, which the only thing you got is Bluetooth in here. So I don't know that you really need to worry about that. And auto charge clock. Huh. Auto charge. Off and on. Oh, auto change? Auto change. On. What does this do? Does that change the watch face each time? Let's see. No, but I'll leave it on, try to figure it out. In terms of watch faces, since we've covered everything in settings and all the other aspects of this, you touch it, nothing happens. You touch and hold. Uh, I got it to change earlier. Press and hold. <laughs> Maybe I just disabled it so it won't change anymore. Let's check that possibility out. Down here to settings. Down here to auto change clock off. And by the way, this seems to be falling open. I've got to, you got to like stick it in here somehow and lock it in place. Um, now, where are we? Press and hold. There, okay. You only have three different faces in here, from what I can tell. And I'm not sure you can add any more to it. It depends on, you know, whether or not it works with the Fundu app, the MediaTek smart device concept of installation of VXP watch faces. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. I don't either. But there are folks out there that do, and you roam around and you'll learn how you could install other watch faces. So if you like that digital one, it should be there. It should wake up when I twist it, and we're all set. So you're looking at the micro, <clears throat> not this one, that's another review, the MicroWare L1. Let's summarize about it. It's got a rather stiff but nice uh, band. It's got antennas in the band, so they're not removable. It doesn't look like it's really going to be waterproof because I've kind of got this thing flopping around here and it's not really uh, got a good seal to it. Uh, but it should be splash proof. There aren't major holes that water can get into. So you're probably okay on that. It's a dual mode device. You can put in your own SIM card and you can put in your own micro SD card into this one, which is a nice benefit. It's an attractive design, albeit it's falling apart a bit. We had a little camera right there that you can capture video and uh, pictures. No pinch and zoom on it though, no double tap zoom. But of course you can export them off to your card and take them into your wherever and play with them there. One single button, press and hold turns it off. And it's to us from Microware directly. There's buying links down below in the show notes. Just click on the main uh, consolidated buying link that Microware is providing us, and all the resources are available there. Just pick the shop you'd like to purchase it from, and you can pick it up. You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. Appreciate your subscription, and uh, come on back. We've got a whole lot of watches coming in, getting ready for the big uh, Thanksgiving time sales.